All right, so some quick uh, basic tasks to run through. The foundation for instrument flying, at least for me, was the instrument scan. Continuously looking at those instruments, making sure nothing is conflicting or making sure nothing is getting out of hand. This is something you can easily practice in a simulator. It's a muscle uh, that will eventually get weaker and weaker. So five minutes here, 20 minutes there is something to keep us fluid and proficient. And then avionics operation, learning how a computer, which is avionics, and its operating logic works while on the ground or at home, in your PJs, whatever, is a lot cheaper than doing it in the in a flight, trying to keep an aircraft aloft, trying to deal with weather, trying to deal with navigating, trying to run the radios. It's a lot better to learn how turning the dial four times and hitting a direct two button or what happens when you hit flight plan three times. It's better to do that in a controlled environment in a less stressful environment, I think, than in an aircraft where you're paying a lot more. Uh, and I wanted to highlight this real quick. This is an update from last week on Microsoft Flight Simulator. They have updated the Garmin GNS 430 and 530 on all their digital aircraft. Uh, I think that's worth noting because the program's been out for almost two and a half years now, since August of 2020, and they are still critiquing and improving minor little details like that. I think it goes to show they are committed to it and they want it to be something that is a simulator and training focused. Autopilot operations, this is something that is very helpful to learn in a simulator and will keep us safe uh, and will reduce our workload when flying in the instrument realm. So learning what happens when you hit that heading bug, what happens when you change your vertical speed and you activate it versus altitude, intersect, all the above, it's great to learn how an autopilot works in a simulator and then bring that into the real aircraft. And then approach briefs. These are, in essence, your way of saying, here are all the details or features I need to know about this approach. Here's what I'm gonna do at this point, at that point. Here is my decision altitude. Here are my missed uh, go around procedures. Here are the correct communication frequencies. Uh, it's a nice briefing for yourself. It's also a nice briefing for your passengers. Uh, and it's something that is worth practicing in a simulator so that when you jump in a real aircraft, you're not really thinking about it. It's second nature. Uh, it may be a little awkward to get caught talking to yourself at a computer doing approach briefings, but it will help you as an instrument pilot. And it is something we can easily critique and practice in a simulator. Let's talk about constant rate climbs and descents. Being able to enter a 500 foot climb with a set airspeed and a set power setting uh, is very helpful in the instrument realm. You need to be able to make those precise setting changes uh, without being able to see your horizon and having control over those variables and being able to make the aircraft do just what you want is very valuable. So constant rate climbs as well as descents are something we can practice and critique and get better at in the simulator, but then throw the other layer of it for constant rate turns. We can make sure we hit that three degrees per second, keep that ball centered, uh, those wings pegged where we'd like them. That is a good uh, idea or thing to practice also in a simulator. But in a simulator, we have a lot of aircraft at our disposal. And for the sake of training, I really only fly in a Cessna 172, which as you can see, a standard rate turn at about 100 knots true airspeed is 15.38 degrees of bank angle. But we can go ahead and test the change in bank angle when airspeed changes. For instance, if you jump in a commercial jet and you're going at 300 knots true airspeed, your bank angle to get three degrees per second is now 39.5 degrees. Changes quite drastically. Imagine what it would require in the SR-71. This is a great thing we can test and better understand in a simulator because we can go test in those faster aircraft and get a better understanding of how constant rate turns are influenced by our speed and our bank angles.